Now, it's not so long ago that Nicola Sturgeon told us here on this programme that she had plenty left in the tank. That didn't quite turn out to be true. And the contest for her job is hotting up. Last week, we spoke to Hamza Youssef, who fancies it. Now, let's talk to Ash Regan, another contender to be Scotland's next First Minister. And Ash reckons that the Westminster government would be willing to negotiate another Scottish independence referendum. Not quite how Rishi Sunak and Keir Starmer see it, but let's hear from her. She joins us from Edinburgh. Good morning to you, Ash. The good biggest morning, point. Good morning. The, the biggest point of difference between you and your opponents really is how quickly you would want to dash for independence. What would your plan be to make it happen? Yes, I think the speed at which we move to independence is important because I want to focus on the things that are important to the people of Scotland. I want to focus on their priorities. So at the moment, that's things like NHS recovery, um, environment, net zero, the cost of living crisis, um, access to the single market. And so I see Scotland being able to govern its own affairs as actually crucial in how we make Scotland a better country to live in for everyone. But SNP members, though, were very interested about how you would achieve their desire of getting Scotland to be an independent country. So how would you do that? Yes. Obviously, people that are members of the SNP think that Scotland should govern itself, that it's entirely natural for countries to take control of their own affairs. So what I'm setting out is that the First Minister, if I'm chosen to be leader of the party, will focus on the priorities of the country. That's things like the NHS, the environment and so on. That I will set up an independence convention and that will be for all the pro-independence parties, it will be for civil society, um, academics, think tanks, businesses, and everyone to get involved with making that case for independence, and that will be the campaigning side. And we need to work together in unity, I believe, in order to make this work. And then the other part of this plan that I have is that I'll set up an independence commission. So um, your viewers might not have heard of that before. And the idea behind this is that that will be a body that will be tasked with um, planning for independence and creating the infrastructure to get Scotland ready for independence. How would you actually make it happen, though? So you've previously said that if pro-independence uh, parties got 50% plus one of the votes cast in an election, mm -hmm. that would be an instruction that you would expect the UK government to say, OK, we can talk about independence now. Now, why do you think they would do that? Because Labour and the Conservatives have repeatedly said they couldn't see a general election as a vote for independence. It's not the same as a referendum. Well, it is the same as a referendum, if you think about it, in terms of the fact that it's the ballot box. So that's a perfectly normal way for, um, you know, to test the will of what the public is. My, my opponents in this contest are setting out a system where they are going to have an election that's based on independence. And they're going to use that as what they're calling it, like a moral mandate to go back to Westminster and to ask them again for another referendum. And we know that's not going to happen. Um, the London government's been very clear that it doesn't think it's going to um, agree to have a referendum anytime soon. We know this. So I don't think that's the way to go about this. What Westminster is doing at the moment is it's trying to stop Scotland expressing its democratic will. I think that's not tenable. I don't think that's credible. So what I'm suggesting is that the, the gold standard here, in fact, is not a referendum. The gold standard here is the ballot box. So I'm proposing that we give the power over when Scotland should become an independent country and that it's not anything to do really with what Westminster think. It's not even to do with what I think. This is a question for the people of Scotland. But how would you we should give that make power that happen, to the people of Scotland? Because as the law stands, there is no connection between the results of a general election and Scotland becoming an independent country. So how practically would you make it happen? So what I'm suggesting is that we run each and every election in Scotland, so that would be the general elections uh, and also the Scottish elections, as a test of public opinion for a trigger point, if you like. And if we get the majority of votes cast, and let's just remember that this um, is a, a previous SNP policy that used to be accepted by the London government as look, entirely legitimate. Well, no, and if it's you accepted think about in the it, context of a referendum, it's never been accepted in the context of a general no, election. No, this, this was a previous SNP policy that if we got the majority, I think it, and previously it was a majority of seats, but I'm making it a slightly tougher test and saying that it should be the majority of votes cast and that it, that was previously accepted by the London government 
uh, that this was a legitimate way for Scotland to express its views. But I'm still struggling to understand, Ashigan, how you practically think mm. you could turn the results of a general election into making the government in Westminster say, fine, Scotland can have its independence. Because there is no suggestion from anybody in the Labour Party or the Conservative Party, who are the two likely parties, however it all casts out to form the next government. What is it that you, you believe is going to change if indeed you had that kind of result in a general election? I can't see what you're saying that would make it happen practically. Well, it would be practical because it would be clearly set out. So people in Scotland would know that what they were voting for was to get um, the government in Edinburgh and the government in Westminster together to negotiate Scotland's exit. So Scotland would be very clear what they were voting for. Um, the UK would be very clear what Scotland would be voting for. And the international community would be very clear about what Scotland is voting for. So I don't think there's any question of the UK government not re uh, recognising Scotland's democratic choice. And we must remember that there is international law operating here. Of course, there's the UN Charter, Article 1.2, which says that um, the right to uh, self-determination must be respected. OK, you first came to public prominence um, for a lot of people when you resigned from the Scottish government over their plans to cut the age at which people could legally change their gender to 16. Um, that has, though, created, your position has created um, some concern among some of the trans community who are seeking reassurance in Scotland that all of the candidates wouldn't roll back the rights for the trans community. Do you want to give that assurance today? Yes, I'm a committed progressive. I did have concerns about the way that that bill was drafted. Um, if I'd been in charge of drafting that bill, I don't think we would have got quite into the position that we did where what we ended up with was a conflict of rights. So I can say quite confidently today that if I become the First Minister, I will make sure I protect and promote everyone's rights. But I will be very clear that there will be no compromise on the rights for women under, you know, if I was to become the First Minister. And just lastly, this week when you were talking about independence, you suggested the idea that you were interested in of a physical readiness thermometer to monitor how close independence was for Scotland as a country. You suggested it could be some kind of even installation somewhere in a public place. Um, can you just explain what that might be and what the purpose would be? Yes, I, what I was explaining to you earlier about the, the Independence Commission. So the idea behind this is that we build confidence in the public by explaining to them what we're doing to get Scotland ready. So this is actual infrastructure. So this would be things like um, planning for the currency and getting that, um, all that stuff arranged. Uh, and what we want to do is we want to have some sort of representation or an index, perhaps as a, maybe a better way of expressing it, so that the public and the media and everyone that's interested can see the progress that, that we're making towards setting up that infrastructure in order to build confidence with the public that Scotland is ready to take control of its own affairs. OK, Ash Regan, thank you very much indeed for joining us. There are a few weeks left in that race, and if you win, then do come back and talk to us as the new First Minister. Now